Hello from Dublin Port and the WB Yates operated by Irish Ferries. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. Hello. I have a bit of a life change to talk about. If you've been following me on Instagram, you might know that I just sold my house here in Ireland. And I'm staying in a hotel near Newry, which is where the house was. I'm starting a new adventure today. I'm traveling from Ireland to France in search of a new home. This will be an entirely new part of my life. And also, I suppose, a new season of Planet Patrick. Finding my place in the sun. And I'd like for you to come on this journey with me. The journey starts today. One of my most popular videos here on the channel is my review of Irish ferries traveling from Dublin to Cherbourg. I last took that trip last year in 2021 during the midst of the pandemic and just as things were starting to loosen up. Given that rules are in a different place in 2022, what's that journey like now? So let's head to Dublin Port and get today's journey underway. Hit me like a ton of I'm not quite sure what's going on, but there's a big queue of trucks and cars behind me and a big queue right in front as well. Okay, I've now made it as far as the check-in point, but it looks like check-in isn't actually open yet. to have a quick look at the terminal building which actually looks quite nice okay back to the car we're way behind it's quarter to four not even 20 percent of cars have been uh, boarded yet used to be Hello from my cabin. If you've seen my 2021 Irish Ferries video, this room might look a little bit familiar. It's a four berth that's set up for one person. One bed is made up. Other beds are tucked away, including this one, which looks like a sofa and feels like a sofa, sort of. That window doesn't look the cleanest, but I think it's going to give us lovely views of the sea as we make our way across to France. Looks good to me. What other things are here in the room? Apart from this very harsh light. Oh, my eyes are melting. There's a ladder to climb up onto the top bunk, if that's your thing. Obviously, this is the door, a place for storage up here, and it very sensibly has a little rim so that things don't immediately fall off as we're careering through the ocean. There's plenty of storage here. I've popped Squeaking Betty. Yes, Squeaking Betty is making a return. And my new acquisition, Carmen the Cool Box. Carmen is currently full of lots of delicious options for my supper and breakfast tomorrow, including fruit, trifle, and a bottle of white wine. Reassuringly cold. Well done, Carmen. I appear to have brought the entirety of the contents of my car with me. I didn't want to leave anything alone. <sighs> Let's continue our room tour instead of worrying about random things that you don't care about. There's a desk here. I'm still unsure what this is for. Maybe for literature? There's a big mirror, a telephone, so you can phone Santa and a switch for that delicious light. Hello. Yes, you do look adorable. And the last time I made a video about Irish ferries, I mentioned that these were European style sockets. Well, I got told. I got told that they were German because the ship was made in Germany. I've forgotten, I'm sorry. I didn't care enough. Underneath this table, there is a fabric poof and a bin with a large donut lid on it. This is my bed. And there's a reassuring amount of pillows. Four. Four pillows are my favourite. I do like this shelf, although I think I might have bumped my head on it last time. 
You might expect this room to be more expensive than an inside cabin, and of course normally it is. But on this occasion, an outside cabin was cheaper than an inside. I don't know how the economics of that work, but supply and demand, I imagine. My lovely window with somebody's forehead print on it, which is strange. There's a table here, and underneath it, I think there's some sockets, if I remember correctly. Yeah, one either side. Oh, I'm not sure I've noticed this before, like a switch. Oh, it's a reading light. Oh, with full swivel potential. And there's one over here as well. The other thing worth mentioning is the TV. Now, last time, the TV didn't particularly work. Well, it worked, but it didn't have any channels. Will it function this time in 2022, post-COVID? I know it's not post-COVID, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna cut this bit out. Welcome. Ooh. There's storage down here, which will take one of my bags, no doubt. Through here is the bathroom. This does look familiar, but it looks really clean. Nice lights on the mirror. Some very unusual green hand-washing liquid. I'm not sure how fond of that I am. And a sink with plenty of water pressure. Let's prove it. Proof. There's loo roll, another bin here, extra loo roll, a loo brush, the twilight zone, a handle to grip, and a hoover for your hair. And here's where you can shower, including the kind of shower curtain that clings to your bum as you're trying to wash yourself. Okay, so I think that's pretty much the room. Always very handy to have a couple of knobs on the back of the door. I've yet to decide whether I'm going to eat in the restaurant or eat snacks that I've brought myself. One more thing that I want to find out. A club class room and access to the club lounge was outrageously expensive at around 150 euros dearer than this cabin. I did ask when checking in whether it was possible to upgrade for one person to club class and they said to call by reception. So maybe let's do that as well and find out how much it costs. If it's anything more than 40 euros, it's not worth it. shop is through here and then at this door you can have access to the exterior. A quick update on club class. Alas, it's priced per cabin. You could have 17 people in the cabin, not really, probably four. And that costs 100 euros. But if you're a single person in a cabin on your own, it's still 100 euros. I'd set a budget of 40, maybe stretching to 50. So I think 100 is just too much to pay. I don't think that's worth it. Maybe for a family it is. I think this is the kids' soft play area. Looks fun. Well, cheers. The last few weeks have been pretty hectic since I got back from Mexico. My house in Ireland had been sold and there was some back and forth, let's call it, trying to organize the final parts of the sale. And to cut a long story short, it happened very quickly at the end. The past couple of weeks have been absolutely hectic. And so I might look a little bit more tired than usual. I'm pretty shattered. In fact, I'm quite happy to be on board the ferry because it means that I won't be making any phone calls or organizing anything or moving anything for the next 18 hours or so. And so I think this little gin and tonic is well deserved. Cheers. lovely, isn't it? And so it's goodbye to Ireland for at least a few weeks. I'm setting off now to stay in Laval for the first four nights. Somewhere in the middle of that is a really wonderful trip to Memphis where I'm going to a travel conference. So it means that I won't see Ireland for a few weeks, but it won't be long until I'm back. It's starting to get close to food time and let's go and try something to eat either in the Brasserie or in the Lady Gregory restaurant.
a little early for the Lady Gregory restaurant, but I am going to treat myself to a three-course dinner with wine. Early birds get three courses for 50 euros versus 60 if you come later. I have to say that the last time that I took the ship, I didn't know that there was a fine dining restaurant. And I'm overjoyed to discover that there is. Mm. slept really, really well. I think the little rocking of the boat and the kind of white noise from the engines lulls me off to sleep. Better go get ready and get some coffee. I think there's a couple of places to get breakfast on board. The Lady Gregory does a formal cooked breakfast and Boylan's Brasserie has a buffet style. There's kind of continental options back here and then a cooked breakfast is served buffet style over here. It's 8.15 and it's not too busy yet in the brasserie. I just got myself a cup of coffee because I've got something in Carmen, the cool box, to have for breakfast. And I also very surreptitiously filled my flask with hot water so I can make extra coffees in my room. My tripod just broke. Darn you tripod! So you are perched on top of a ledge on a very small tripod. Okay, so here's some of the essential things I bring with me for breakfasts and lunches. First of all, a cutlery bag. In other words, it's a pencil case filled with things that I might need, like a very handy spork, skizzers, or as they're known, skizzers. A little vegetable peeler. Why might you need a vegetable peeler? Well, I like raw carrots, particularly if I've got some dip. I'm going to have one for breakfast. And there's lots of other things in here. Little knives, a screwdriver, that kind of thing. You never know when you're going to need one of those things. Okay, so as you saw, I went up to Boylan's Brasserie, got myself some coffee. It's grand. Then over here in Carmen the Cool Box, we have lots of different breakfast options. I have some dip here for my carrot. I've never tried this before. It's a garlic one. Banana, which I do want. Okay, all set for breakfast. I know the carrot is strange. Sharp knife. Oh, that's nice. Mmm, very garlicky. Mmm, that's nice granola. That was absolutely delicious. Thank you. Well, that's breakfast done with. I'm going to head up on deck. I'm slightly confused about something from yesterday. We departed about an hour and 15 minutes late. I'm not sure whether we've picked up some of that delay, whether we're going to arrive an hour and 15 or maybe even later. If we pop up on deck, we might see if we can see land at this point, whether it's all a misty, murky mystery. I don't think, oh God. I found a little corner where it's not quite as windy. It's really breezy out there. It's no wonder there's almost nobody on deck apart from a couple of hardy smokers. Well, no sign of land, not even a seagull. We are running still slightly late. Pilot will be boarding us in about 10 minutes and we shall be alongside with half an hour delay. Apologies. I have to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what he said. I was ranting yesterday evening about this being maybe a three birth. As I got into bed last night, my eyes traveled upwards. Here and here are the locks that you unscrew to allow the top bunks to fold down. My faculties were not fully functioning last evening. So it is a four birth set up for one person. The last ferry trip that I took was with Brittany Ferries from Bilbao to Rosslare. That was a pain in the neck. This, however, has been a breeze. This cost 283 euros. The Bilbao one way was around 600. You make your own calculations. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, appears the edges of the port.
That must mean that we're pretty close. I better get packed up, ready to rock. I wasn't expecting to say this, but there's a really strong smell of cow poop. I'm not sure if you saw the clip earlier from yesterday evening. There are three or four trucks carrying cattle. You might have heard their lowing. It sounded like cries for help. It resulted in that particular smell, I'm afraid. Okay, about half an hour until we get in, I got talking to somebody who seemed to know what was going on. Final little walk around on the deck and then time to get packed up. As we're waiting to disembark the boat, let me tell you a little bit about what's happening today. First up, I'm going to visit the Bayeux Tapestry. I'm familiar with it from childhood. I suspect we must have been taught it as part of history. The reason I've picked that is that I want to break up today's driving. It's about one hour and eight minutes from here to the Musée de la Tapisserie de Bayeux. And loosely, it's kind of on the road to where I'm going later on, which is the town of Laval. I've never been there before, and I'm going to stay for four nights in Laval. I'm on chill out time here. I want to chill out for a few days before I get going with the house hunt. It does look like the guys from Irish Ferries are starting to prep. One more thing, I expect to be stopped, mostly everybody is stopped here, to check their passport and also to check their sworn statement, which persists on entry into France regarding COVID. These things, as we know, change all of the time. So you do need to check with Irish ferries or your carrier to work out what the rules are for your situation. Onwards we go. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Planet Patrick from here aboard Irish Ferries WB Yates. I'm glad you could be here for this episode right at the start of me finding my new home. I hope you can be here for the rest of it. See you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick.